Hi, so here's the end result of my VFD install on a 120 volt Super 11. So even though they set it up to, for a single phase power coming in, they still use a three phase motor. And they basically run it on two of the legs and then the third leg they fake with those capacitors. It's not the best setup, but you can get by. And obviously it's been getting by for what, 30, 40 years? At any rate, <clears throat> uh, I finally got around to uh, putting the VFD on that's been sitting on the shelf for six years. Yeah, not proud of that. But anyway, <laughs> I mounted it on a piece of angle that uh, still allows for the rear cover to come off. Um, these cheap Chinese uh, drives are famous for a really noisy fan. So I also put a heat sink, sorry, I put a thermal switch between the fins of, a heat, of the heat sink and then a, I think it's 500 ohm resistor. So the fan's running right now at low speed. If it does warm up, which occasionally it does, the fan will come on and, and then it'll cool off and shut off again. So the fan was really annoying. So here's what I did. Um, there was a lot of options. <laughs> Some of them I thought were worth pursuing. So I've got forward, stop, and reverse, and a run switch. And then variable speed. Uh, the minimum is pretty slow. I think that's about two, two hertz. And then I use the low speed windings on the motor. Uh, the high speed ones don't get you anything except a loss of torque and it's not as smooth. So I use the low speed windings and then I can double the frequency going in from 60 to 120 and end up with the same maximum speed that the factory intended for the motor. So it goes from next to nothing to the original design speed. And the cool thing about the electronic control is it takes care of braking and reverse is easy and um, that's that's nice. I also, because it was there, uh, you can set a preset of, uh, there, you can set a lot of preset speeds. I just used two. Uh, I set one at 10 hertz and one at 120. And uh, yeah, I know you can just turn the knob and get the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and I also put jog on it, which is kind of cool. Makes it easier to change gears. So, what was else was I going to say here? Um, I lost my place. Oh, yeah. The practical part of putting this together was pretty straightforward. The wiring wasn't that complicated. Uh, after a little dig and then some cut and try, I figured out that just the low speed windings were used and the high speed ones are just capped off. I think that's correct. At any rate, the motor is happy. The amperage is low everywhere throughout the range. Um, the fan almost never comes on on the, on the inverter, so it's not working hard. The motor doesn't heat up. Uh, it's all pretty happy, and that's what I did. The controls bit, well, there was a lot of options, so I took advantage of that. I designed and printed the box, the control box there. Um, what else? Oh yeah, most important part. The practical part was easy. The manual was frickin' horrible. It took me days to figure that thing out. So I documented the whole story. Uh, also the wiring and the programming. The programming, that, that took a while to figure out because the manual is really poorly laid out. So uh, I hope that helps. The document is a PDF with the whole shebang rolled into one. And it's on the, uh, it's stored on the group here. Um, I hope it helps somebody out. So 
Even if you're doing a different voltage, everything's going to be kind of the same except the numbers. Some of the numbers. Um, the rest of it is pretty going to be pretty similar. And I think even if you're talking different brands of uh, drives, I think those are going to be pretty similar too. Anyway, I might be talking out my butt. But there you go. I hope this helps. And uh, make chips. <laughs>